Okay. Um, as uh, Devin said, my name is Bridget Sanders, and I am one of the research and instructional services librarians at UNC Charlotte. Uh, and welcome to our presentation on creating a culture of library employee wellness through personal interest groups. Also joining me is my cohort in crime. <laughs> Tiffany Davis. Um, hello everyone and happy Friday. Um, as uh, Devin said, I am the former diversity resident librarian. I left uh, UNC Charlotte um, at the end of December, um, and I'm now in Pennsylvania um, as the interim library director at Lincoln University. Um, and that's all about me. So next slide, thank you. So we would like to um, acknowledge the land that UNC Charlotte is located on, which is the traditional homelands of five different native groups, including the Catawba, Sherall, Sugary, Watery, and Waxhaw peoples. The city of Charlotte has a native community that has thrived here for over 50 years, including members of all of North Carolina's eight state and federally recognized tribes. Next slide, please. So we're gonna start this off with something fun. Where is your dream destination vacation? And we'll give you a couple minutes to tell us where you would like to go. So folks, if you could respond in Mentimeter, Mentimeter so if you go to menti.com, and enter the code 31419502. That way we can all see the responses on the screen. Woohoo, Hawaii. That's my dream destination, <laughs> too. Home. Home. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that would be nice today. <laughs> Old Switzerland, that's, one of, that's on my bucket list. <laughs> Anyone else? So we want you to um, remember this as we go through our uh, presentation. Winston-Salem, woohoo, yay. There's another Switzerland, Virgin Islands. I would love to be on somebody's beach, anybody's beach right yeah. about now. Absolutely. Alaska, I heard, was uh, absolutely beautiful. Japan sounds nice. Thank you. New Zealand. Ah. Oh. Mm. Next slide, please. So I'm sure you all are aware of our need to um, take care of ourselves, especially during um, these times. We need to keep ourselves in a positive space. Um, so according to the CDC, well-being is the ability of individuals to address normal stresses, work productively, and realize one's highest potential. Um, as you all know, we all spend a large part of our day and lifetime at work. And this increases the effect that workplaces have on employees' mental health and well-being. Um, in September 2021, 4.4 million people resigned from their jobs and their positions due to inflexibility, burnout, and especially during the COVID um, era, um, folks started reevaluating um, their priorities. Um, organizations and workplaces that care about and invest in uh, the mental health of its employees also reduce the stress that we have in the workplace. This can lead to um, fewer mental health concerns and increased employee engagement. So forming interest groups, and you'll hear sort of hear us um, interchangeably use that word, or sometimes they're called um, infinity groups, personal interest groups. Um, that's one way our library chose to improve um, the well-being of the employees here in the library 
help our uh, coworkers manage their stress. Um, it was great at building relationships, improving productivity, and reducing burnout. Next slide, please. Okay, our next poll question is, how often do you or a colleague or colleagues um, experience stress? Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of dailies. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, um, we all have some type of daily um, stress that puts us in some type of mood. Okay. Um, next slide. Thank you all for answering that question. Uh, so now we'll talk about the need for self-selected groups um, and how they were developed. Uh, so taking into consideration um, the wellness concerns, especially um, the stress levels that um, a lot of you are dealing with on a daily basis, um, our library decided to form what we call self-selected groups. Uh, this is similar to affinity groups, and it was started with a relatively new librarian at the time. Um, when he brought this idea to uh, the library staff development committee, um, it was something that his former library did um, in order to, um, you know, uh, build relationships within the library and also, um, you know, talk about things that were interesting or um, learn about other hobbies that you can, you know, that you have with other people that are in your uh, library. Um, so the staff development committee was able to have some discussions about forming groups in the library and we decided to, um, to try those groups out. Um, and it was definitely a success. So many people were interested in excuse me, starting new groups um, that involve their hobbies and their interests. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the ways that we started um, forming those groups, uh, we started, of course, having conversations with our colleagues to uh, start to plan group development, um, making sure that you have a goal in mind and planning which groups to introduce. Um, we were able to ask staff uh, members for suggestions on what type of groups they would like to form and also recruit known staff members. Uh, so people that, uh, you know, were interested in different hobbies um, or, you know, exercising, things like that. Um, and we were able to kind of gather those thoughts and suggestions and start to form groups. Um, and we also recommend that you get approval from uh, library leadership, including possible approval for funding um, for some resources uh, that could help with your group. So for instance, um, in Atkins Library, the Staff Development Committee has a bookshelf uh, with resources for different uh, groups that are housed in our library, for the self-selected group, sorry. Um, and they aren't in our regular collection. They're there for just groups to check out um, those resources. Um, so also making sure that you express to leadership the need for these, um, for these groups and make sure that they are being held during work time. So that was you know, something that we really pushed for was making sure that we were able to have these, um, these groups meet during our work hours. So you know, it could take some of that daily stress off of you, even though, you know, you have to go back to it, but at least during that one hour, you'll be able to connect with people that have similar interests with you. And it's a more of an informal um, group meeting. Uh, next slide, please. 
Also uh, keep in mind to seek out facilitators for these groups. Um, with the self-selected groups at Atkins Library, we were able to, um, we asked that the folks that asked for uh, those groups or had suggestions for groups, um, they were asked to serve as a facilitator. Um, so meeting with the facilitators um, to make sure that you decide the structure of how your group should go, um, also including meetings and expectations of the groups. Um, a lot of times we have groups that have, uh, a lot of our groups have standing meetings. Um, and sometimes that can be a little bit hard, but we'll talk about that later. Um, also have an interest fair. Um, the interest fair is there to help you introduce the groups to other library staff. So how Athens Library did it, um, the staff development committee would set up a group fair, a self-selected, I'm sorry, interest fair um, every year around the time where you start to um, leave uh, committees and you know go into other committees. So we would do it around, we would do it around that time period. Um, so we would set up a large, we would set up tables in our large conference room and we would have a representative from each group set up a table. Um, and most of the time they would put displays out um, that, you know, talked about their group, you know, kind of to entice people to join their group. And we would have a signing sheet, a sign up sheet, sorry. And so you would, you know, you could put your name, um, your email, and then the representative would reach out to you um, to let you know when the groups um, are meeting and the expectations of those groups. Okay, next slide, thank you. So here are a few of the groups that uh, were formed uh, initially and are still meeting um, on a regular basis now. Next slide, please. The first one is a book club. And they have discussions centered around fiction books that are decided by the group. And some of these include Florida by Lauren Groff, Midnight Library by Matt Hayes, and When Ghosts Come Home by Wiley Cash. And they were also fortunate enough to have, to have Wiley Cash, who is a New York Times bestselling novelist and actually lives in North Carolina, meet with them to discuss his book. And having an author talk to the group is where some of that asking for uh, funding or resources to support the groups comes in handy. Um, I'm not sure if he asked to be paid or whether they paid him a small amount of money or any money at all, but this could be um, where funding would uh, come in uh, handy. Next slide, please. So this is a healthy living and travel group. And this is one that Tiffany, Tiffany and I were both in before she left. Um, when we started the group, uh, healthy living was a separate group and travel was a separate group. Um, travel, no, healthy living really didn't materialize um, as the facilitators thought. So we had an idea to combine the two groups. And this is for people who enjoy learning about new places, new cultures, healthy food, traveling, um, exercising, all of that. We kind of put all of that um, into uh, this group. Next slide, please. And some of the presentations uh, include um, having one on healthy, how to eat healthy during the holidays. We also shared some um, holiday recipes or just recipes in general. Um, and New Orleans was a trip that uh, Tiffany actually took and she did a presentation on her trip to New Orleans. And we also have a coworker and group member who travels extensively. Um, and she shares her photos and talks about her experiences and what she saw and also the food um, that is offered. And we try to, we try to offer healthier options when taking vacations. But as we all know, eating healthy may not be on the agenda 
when you're vid visiting certain cities or places like New Orleans. Um, also, Tiffany and I collaborated on my imaginary trip driving down the Pacific Coast Highway. We started in um, San Francisco and included places like Alcatraz um, and restaurants or foods I wanted to eat, of course. And then Tiffany concluded the presentation with her pictures of uh, Los Angeles from a family trip that uh, she took. And she showed the places that they went to and explored and the food they ate or restaurants they went to. Um, we also had someone on the healthier side. We also had someone from uh, what we call our UREC. It's our campus University of Recreation Center. We had someone meet with us to discuss exercising um, that we could do at our desk since this was um, at a time when it was starting to uh, get cold, the weather was changing. So she um, showed us some exercises for that. She also talked about joining the gym and apps that could be downloaded. And she showed um, some YouTube videos of exercises that we could do outside of the office. It was very informative. Um, at the end, we had a little Q and A session um, and we talked about um, some exercises. We actually one of the better conversations we had um, with that when it was Q and A time was talking about um, shoes, which shoes you should wear for which exercises. And um, I learned a lot. I learned names of some shoes I'd never heard of, um, and so that was very helpful um, for me. Next slide, please. Okay, I wanted to talk about the Cross Stitch Club. Um, I'm not, I wasn't a part of that club, but I, I, I know Bridget was, and uh, she <laughs> talked about how, how skilled you have to be to uh, work on patterns. So um, in this club, they were able to discuss patterns that they worked on, um, favorite places to find patterns in working on. Uh, cross stitch projects together. Um, so they would meet and, um, you know, help each other out if need be. Um, but it was a really great uh, way to, um, especially during uh, quarantine and, you know, some parts of the pandemic, um, it was a really good way to connect with people online and also um, see the members that were a lot more skilled um, at cross stitching, and of course, they would help others in if they have any problems or questions. They would help in that group as well. Um, and then, so the next slide, I will show you a couple of projects that two of our members did, and you can see the detail um, in these projects that were. So you see what they are doing in cross stitch. I know a one wonderful job with these cross stitch projects. So that's one of the groups that. Um, Atkins Library off. Atkins Library offer. Sorry. Next slide. And I was a beginner oh. in that group, and I was uh, very intimidated by the skill <laughs> level of the other group members in there. But they were um, the the two coworkers who did these two projects um, were really helpful to me. They. Uh, talked me through some of the issues that I was having and gave me suggestions of how to fix things and stuff like that. So it was a, gr a good group um, to be in. Okay, and another group that Bridget and I are were a part of, actually facilitators of that group, um, was the, is the uh, music appreciation group. Uh, so we would have monthly discussions and presentations on music and musicians. Um, some of the presentations include, um, and you can go to the next slide, sorry. Um, some of those presentations include um, country music month, uh, classical music, international surf music month, and musical theater. theater. Um, we would uh, have presentations uh, in these meetings, and we would show YouTube videos of, song, of the songs and people um, prominent figures, um, his, the history behind uh, the music genres, and 
those were all included in these presentations. Um, one of the facilitators in the group um, is actually a musician and plays several instruments. Um, he has performed in symphony orchestras and also for events that the library has hosted for staff. Uh, we were able to have another colleague play his guitar and sing for us um, for the group um, on Get Out Your Guitar Day. So we learned so much in this group, um, especially about different you know, music genres. Like I had no idea there was an international surf music month. Um, and it was really cool to learn about that and you know how surf music really was like super popular and how it got started. So it's it's just a really fun, fun, fun group to be in. Um, next slide, please. All right, and then we have the Mystic Arts group. I was a part of that one as well. Um, we would have discussions on a variety of topics um, relating to the metaphysical and the I can't say that word. Show and, and we would also have show and tell sessions during our meetings to talk about um, what we what we purchased in the last month or so. Um, future topics of discussion that they'll have um, will be about tarot cards, um, astrology, crystals, crystal healing, uh, meditation, uh, healing herbs, plants, and local foraging also aromatherapy, and we also took field trips to different metaphysical stores. So we were able to have a field trip at the Bag Lady. Um, and there's a future trip in March that uh, they'll be taking. Next slide, please. Um, the last group we'll talk about is the uh, writing group. Uh, they meet twice a month. And they have two different kinds of sessions. The creative sessions are for writing um, anything that they're working on, any current projects, asking other group members uh, for help if they get stuck anywhere or need ideas. And then they have um, the discussion sessions, which is their stand, standing monthly meeting. And uh, in that meeting, group members can submit um, a piece for the group to read or edit or critique. Um, they bring in poetry, fiction, articles, whatever. And as they say, works in progress and messy first drafts are welcome. So that group is um, active in writing. We have several very good writers uh, in the library and um, these sessions have been um, very helpful for them. Next slide, please. And I'll say we also have a, um, in a librarian that's in a children's book author. He, um, children's book author. So, you know, that's some things that could come out of those sessions as well. Um, so I wanted to make some suggestions for um, other personal interest groups that you all could possibly think about. Um, Atkins Library does have a film um, movies interest group, um, and they actually watch movies and or film, and they um, have sessions on you know their critiques about those films. Um, you can think about painting um, if you are a painter or would like to learn how to paint. Um, you can have a group with painting, um, knitting. Um, a walking group, yoga group, rollerblading, roller skates. Um, there's all different types of groups that you all could create um, that, you know, host your interests or, you know, your hobbies. Next slide, please. So uh, our next poll question is, what interest groups would you suggest for your library? And it has doesn't have to be anything from the list that we have. Ooh, a board game. Yeah, board game group. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that is a good one. Mm. Mm. I like that. Oh, a garden club. Okay.
like that garden club. I hadn't even thought about doing a know. garden club. Crafting groups, book clubs, healthy habits. Okay. Yeah, we try that with the healthy living. Bird watching, <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good one. We used to have a personal writing club as well. Yeah. All right, thank else? you. Anything else that you can think of? Okay. Okay, thank you. And if you are able to form groups, um, these are some other opportunities for staff engagement. And these are some things that are, um, are part of the staff uh, de development committee at UNC Charlotte. Um, we, we host a welcome wagon and this is an opportunity for um, current employees to meet with new employees that are coming into the library. And it's just the, you know, welcome, welcoming them into the space and making sure that they feel, you know, included and, you know, also getting to be able to meet other folks. Um, there's also a getting to know you group. Um, this is a, so what we do is we send out emails to uh, people that are already working in the library um, and they can, so Atkins Library, for instance, if they are, if we are fully staffed, there are 100 employees. So it's really hard to get to know people um, throughout the library. So this is an opportunity to get to know someone that you haven't really spent time with or they work in another department and you don't really know, you know, what their job entails. So that's a really good way to um, get people to talk to each other. Um, and with the getting to know you, you a lot of times uh, you would take uh, take the person out to lunch or for a walk. Um, acting, I mean, the University of, I'm sorry, UNC Charlotte has a really beautiful botanical garden. So that's one way that you can, you know, get to know someone um, or you know, take them out to coffee or, you know, meet them in their office and just chit chat for a while. So that's one of the, the uh, opportunities that you can have for staff engagement as well. Um, we also play bingo. Um, and typically it's about once a month um, and it gets really competitive because we give out gift cards and other small prizes. Um, and it's really fun um, to play. And um, we also have out of the box. And this is an opportunity for you to um, go out to lunch with a group of people from um, the library. And at first when it started, we would do lunch just on campus. And then it started to become where we would actually leave campus and have lunch um, so that we can, you know, just unwind and have conversations with our colleagues that we probably never really get to talk to. Uh, next slide. So now I'll talk about some of the benefits and goals um, of establishing these interest groups or affinity groups or personal interest groups. Um, as you can see, we have um, really enjoyed being in the groups that we're in. So this can lead to employees who are happier, healthier, and more productive because it's not always um, constant work, 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 work. Um, sometimes you get a chance to uh, play a little bit, unwind with your colleagues and establish um, relationships. It also provides an outlet for individuals who have the same interests, like uh, we are interested in traveling, um, cooking, arts and crafts, and other uh, hobbies. And it also provides an opportunity for employees to engage, learn, and build relationships. This is especially um, important in large uh, libraries where you don't often get to see somebody from another department. You don't get a chance to have a conversation with them unless it's in a meeting. Um, and then it's all still all about work. 
So this gives you a little time to wind down during your work day, maybe for like an hour and um, build a relationship with your other coworkers. And this can also promote and enrich wellness as well as create camaraderie within the library. Next slide, please. So now we'll talk about some of the challenges that we have experienced. Um, employee interest. Um, hopefully there will be um, employees who are interested in joining groups, but you may not ha always have somebody interested in a group. Um, and that leads to maintaining the groups. Um, as we all know, we can um, get into groups or, or make commitments, but then other things come up that you have to take care of and you may not be able to um, stay in the group. I was one of those who initially started in the cross-stitch group, but um, I didn't have the time um, to devote to cross-stitching, nor could I meet um, on the days that they were meeting. I had um, another commitment come up but they still have enough group members to, to keep going. So I'm, I'm glad that they um, were able to uh, keep it going. Um, leadership buy-in. We all know that sometimes we uh, talking to leadership um, could be difficult, especially if you are asking for work time to be devoted to something other than work. Um, hopefully you can make leadership understand why it's important, um, the benefits of having groups like this, and also um, it's challenging to ask for funding. Um, even if it's a little bit of funding, it, it is worth it to ask for that. Um, finding facilitators can be a challenge also, um, but as Tiffany said earlier, what they did is the, the, they approached the person who made a suggestion on the on the group and asked them to be a facilitator. Um, to my knowledge, no one said no. Uh, so that's kind of why with the music appreciation group, there are three of us who are facilitators. We all had the same idea. And so we all um, uh, contribute to being a facilitator. Like I will um, make the meetings and uh, Tiffany, me, and Reese is the other one. We will do presentations, although we open it up for other group members to do a presentation on something that they're interested in or to even um, make suggestions. Um, and I did that the other day, asked for suggestions because we have literally um, done presentations for the last two years um, on a good majority of the music holidays or celebrations. And so I didn't want to start going back through the same presentations again. So I asked folks for uh, some suggestions and I had a suggestion of doing something on um, John Coltrane, uh, Nina Simone, someone else suggested K-pop. Um, so those are probably some of the ones that we will do in the coming months. Um, finding a common meeting date and time can be a challenge also um, because we all have different things that um, happen on different days. We have other standing meetings. Finding that one hour that everyone can meet can actually be um a challenge and some people have, most of the groups I think have a standard meeting date and time. Um, again, with the music appreciation group, I'm in charge of setting up the meetings. So I look at uh, everybody, everybody's calendar. Um, at the time when I first started doing that, we only had about five members, five or six members. And it wasn't that hard, but we have grown a little since then. Um, since our last interest fair, we had a couple other people who signed up, like three or four other people. So that's getting a little bit challenging for me to keep finding um, a date when I'm looking at now 
seven or eight or nine different calendars. Um, and uh, there usually is no common meeting date and time that I can find where everybody can meet, but I try to find a time that the majority of the committee can meet. And I think um, because we have grown, uh, we may need to set a common meeting date and time because it's it's a little bit of work for on my part. Um, another challenge is trying to keep uh, the competitiveness out of the group. Um, we have a, is it walking group, Tiffany, that uh, does, they keep up with the how many steps they've done um, and they send it out to the group. And the person who I guess has done the, the most wins a, a prize. Um, and so that, can compete and uh, make some competitiveness come into that group. Um, but as long as no one's, you know, feelings get hurt because they didn't do as many steps. And I don't think they've had that problem. The group that we have have had that problem, but it, it could um, com uh, create that competitiveness. And sometimes that competitiveness is good because um, it, challenges everybody to maybe do more, do more steps, uh, run a little bit longer um, or anything like that. Uh, next slide, please. And this is some of the feedback that we have received from the, from the staff. Um, as far as bingo, it was, this was so fun. Um, we had someone who said meeting new people has made my job easier, and that's where uh, building these relationships and um, building that camaraderie within the library helps out. Um, who knew coming to work could be so fun? Um, I was able to increase my skill set and knowledge through the group. Um, and then uh, lastly, I didn't know there were others in the library who had the same hobby as I do. Um, this has been a fun and creative outlet at work that has helped us to become better employees, reduce some stress. It doesn't always reduce all the stress, but it does help reduce the stress and allows us to get to know our colleagues in other departments. And I must say that has, has definitely been um, a plus for me. Um, People that I didn't know from another department, um, I've gotten to know better. Um, and then when I uh, need something from that person or have a question, a work-related question, I um, am now more confident in going to that person now that I know them a little bit more and, and interact with them on a different level. Next slide, please. And we want to say thank you, and we will um, entertain questions now if you have any. Folks, free, feel free to unmute yourself or um, send your questions to the chat. Thank uh, you. We have a question from Jen. <clears throat> uh, you shared feedback from staff. What kind of assessments do you do to get feedback? I don't think we do like formal assessments, um, maybe for some of the more structured uh, events that we do, like the bingo. Right. I think there is a formal assessment for that, if I'm not mistaken, Tiffany, because you're right. on, you were on that group. Yes, um, I think that the assessment team does put that into play. Um, it could be considered um, uh, like events that we may have um, mainly based around staff development. Um, so it kind of is housed through that area. Um, and I'm not exactly sure if they specifically have uh, the self-selected groups in there um, because it's such an internal aspect of the library. Um, I know they focus a lot on um, external sources. So uh, that's something that 
they probably could think about. That would be a great way to um, implement some information for assessing assessing those um, groups. Maybe take my blood pressure before the the group meeting and <laughs> right. take it after the group meeting would be a wonderful <laughs> thing to assess. Um, is there is a limit? No, there is no limit. limit. Oh no, no limit. No limit. And you no. can and you can stop your group anytime. Um, you know, if you feel like it's not working for everyone, um, that's the reason why we were able to put the healthy living and travel group together because it was, you know, the people that were in the group uh, or the facilitators, they weren't able to really receive a lot of people in the group. So it just made it a lot easier to combine the two. Um, and then, like I said earlier, we had a cursive writing group um, that kind of dissipated as well. But um, because the person wasn't, he, he was working from home a lot more. So it was really hard to help people with learning how to write in cursive. So it just depends on the group really. And the film, film and movies group went on hiatus yes. um, for a little bit. Um, I'm not sure why I think, um, I don't think it was because of not enough members. I think it was time-wise. Right. Um, who the facilitator was. I think some of his duties and responsibilities may have changed and he wasn't able to uh, get the meetings going again. So they they went on a hiatus, but they are now back. We When we did the interest fair, um, they had a table and I think more people um, jo rejoined and joined again with, with that group. I have a question. Do, uh, do you find that staff at Atkins Library from all levels are joining the interest group? So like management as well as Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Even as far as our dean. Our yeah. dean, yeah, she was a, she's a part of a lot of the groups as well. Okay. Yeah, so, no, for sure she was in the cross-stitch group. Yes, she was. Yeah. And she's in the music appreciation group, although I can't <laughs> ever find a time that she can meet with us. <laughs> <laughs> because she's so busy. Yeah. She's so busy, yeah. Yeah, but all levels, definitely. And that's what makes it really beautiful because everyone, you know, you never know who has the same interests as you. And then once you form these groups, you know, you're able to um, meet more people and people from all over in the departments are able to join and, you know, you get to know more about them as well. And it, you know, in the, when I was in the Cross Stitch Club, we um, had made a decision that we were not going to talk about work. Yeah. So we we kept it strictly about cross-stitching. You know, we talked about families or vacation. You know, we kind of kept it light and we, we did not talk about work. And yes, these meetings are month, usually monthly. Yes. With the, I think of exception of the writing group, they meet twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, when they can, I'm sure. Um, I'm not in that group, but they do have a month, a week, a uh, two month, nah, two, two meetings months. per month. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And yes, this is during work hours. Um, and that is where you have to get buy in for leadership. Right. Um, our dean of the library was, was uh, happy to accommodate these groups to take an hour um, out of the day. Um, and it can be any time of, of the day. Uh, sometimes uh, the music appreciation group, when I'm doing it, sometimes we it happens where our meetings fall during lunchtime, like 12 to one. And I tell people, bring your lunch, enjoy the presentation. It's, uh, it, it's not work related it's just something that we enjoy um doing listening to music or learning about new uh about new music or musicians or um you know anything music related and then sometimes i think our our meetings uh may end up in the afternoon 
mm -hmm. um, like from three to four. We try to keep it before four because after four, a lot of folks start leaving, right. um, leaving work. Uh, so yeah, it, it's anytime during the day, during the work hours. And I see there was a question from Allison um, about a limit on how many groups a person can join. No, there's no limit um, of how many groups you can join. Um, I was a part of about maybe three or four groups um, when I was there and they worked out really well because they all were at different on different days and different times. So it worked out perfectly that way. But yes, you can join as many groups as you like or that you can handle. <laughs> that you can handle, that your schedule can handle. <laughs> right, yeah. right. With the groups, are is it mostly meeting over Zoom or has there been more in-person uh, interest um, meetings brought back? So before the pandemic, there were a lot, of course, obviously meeting in person. Um, and then we were also able to maintain a lot of it during quarantine. So that was really right. helpful as well. Um, and so those, of course, were through Zoom um, and uh, like even the out of the box one, right, which, which is not a self-selected group, but that's a part of the staff development committee. We still were able to, um, we figured out a different way to um, host the out of the box. So we knew we couldn't leave and go to lunch with one another, but so we would have like sessions where we would ask questions or have some type of um you know, just like an hour where we're just sitting and having conversations about any and everything. Um, and that's actually how the music appreciation group popped up was during that time where we talked about, oh, we should have a group about music. And that's how that happened. And um, yeah, so during, yeah, and I think a lot, and I think even when we got back from being on quarantine, we still meet on Zoom. So yeah, I mean, the Mystic Arts group, we did meet in person um, because we like to share things and um, that we've purchased. So we would meet um, in person. Gotcha. And one other thing that uh, came to mind when Tiffany was talking, which is not a part of uh, this group, and we don't do it that often, um, because the dean is so busy, but she used to have um, a happy hour yes. with her. Um, it was done via Zoom. Everybody can fix their favorite beverage, whether yeah. <laughs> alcoholic or non-alcoholic. And for an hour, we would just um, over Zoom uh, chat with the dean yeah. um, and have a snack or a drink and it usually took place uh, from four to five. Right, four to five, yes. Yeah. Four to five. Um, and so that was also very nice and maybe something that one of the other libraries would like to institute. And it, we didn't talk about work. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about everything else, vacations, um, family, yes. um, any, anything other than, than work. And we haven't done that in a few months uh, because her schedule is challenging. Um, uh, but it, it was really, really nice to to have that time, that uh, relaxing time with the dean, and you know, see another side of her that you don't get to see maybe at at work. Um, so yeah, that that was also something we we do. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't put that in the, um, there's a happy hour just for staff as well. So I didn't put that on the staff development committee um, slide, but uh, that's another time where you can meet up at a restaurant, a bar and have drinks and have fun. And, you know, yeah. it's outside of work hours. So because it's five o'clock somewhere. Off time. <laughs> yeah, that takes the pressure off too, I think. Uh, when people are coming, I mean, in the poll, it was clear, like we get all these stresses throughout their, our work day and that can kind of compound and put pressure on our relationships with our coworkers and people in the library and the chance to actually see each other. is like, oh, you're a person who likes fantasy books like I do, or right. 
is also a Spanish speaker. Like there are things that you can just kind of do that aren't just work, work Devin, work Tiffany, work Bridget, right. you right. know? Yeah. 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 And, and it has really been fun um, in the groups. I'm in the music appreciation group, as, as I said, and the healthy, um, healthy living and travel group. And I must say that I look forward to uh, that hour um, yeah. where I'm at work, but I'm not doing work. I'm having some fun. I can, that hour, I can take my mind off of uh, what I need to be doing, what I'm supposed to be doing, and just have fun and talk to my colleagues or do a presentation on, you know, music that I'm interested in. Um, or I didn't know about it's more um, sometimes it's a learning experience for us as the facilitator and the presenters um, that we learn uh, something from the music appreciation group or the healthy living and it's always nice to know that there is someone else who may be struggling with their weight or struggling to eat healthy and then get tips and ideas and recipes from um, other people that you hadn't thought about. Uh, one of the, the healthy living young ladies who does the travel, she um, cooks a lot, uh, not traditional dishes that we would normally eat, but some of the, she's picked up some recipes from some of her travels. Um, and she shares those, shares those with us. And that's always nice, even if it's not so healthy. Um, but she does try to, she, she because she's a very picky eater. <laughs> she doesn't eat a lot of things. So most of what the, her recipes, most of them are healthier versions of something or a healthy, healthier dish than I would maybe normally um, be eating. So I have to Put down that pork chop and maybe <laughs> one of her <laughs> one of her recipes. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Um, folks, if there's no final questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Bridget and Tiffany after uh, today if something comes up and you're looking for more advice if you're trying to put a plan together to talk to your library leadership about interest groups. Um, reach out to them. Um, I hope this was a uh, inspirational. I'm glad to hear Jen um, and uh, filled up your cup. Um, yeah. We will take a break for lunch and come back at one o'clock. But um, enjoy, enjoy your lunch. Don't stick to the computer. Walk around. Have <laughs> yeah. enjoy some and I fresh hope you air. All, I hope <laughs> if you decide to. Um, do an interest group. Yeah. I hope it it is successful. So do um, I. And, and don't and remember, uh, failing is not that bad. If if a group doesn't come together um, at one time, maybe try it again. Like I said, the film and movies group um, actually had to to take a hiatus and then uh, regroup. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And there may be may not be folks who are interested in the same thing you are mm -hmm. um, or there may be one or two even if you have one or two extra people that's not bad that's still a group um, and it could be it could be a little more intimate than it would be if it were a larger group yeah, yeah that's the mystic arts group it was like three of us in that group so you know well and what's nice too is the fact that like in libraries, we love to be helpful. We love to take on maybe more right. things than we can fully do. And it's nice to treat something social as not like work, work, you work. know, like it's fine if it doesn't right. happen perfectly. You don't need to control or right. perfect your fun. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you may not even be able to meet monthly or, yeah. you know, right maybe every other month. So right, kind of be right. flexible with, with that because we all know we're all busy all the time and there's always something that we have to do. So, you know, don't, 
don't be afraid to modify um, anything that we said uh, as far as the meeting times, dates, and, and all of that. Modify it uh, to your library, how it works for you. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your advice and examples. Um, folks, we'll take a break now and head return at one o'clock, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.